from the Helen Herald palladium.com because the Florida Sentinel wanted me to pay and I ain't paying for that nonsense. Not in any way, shape or form. No, sir. Florida lawmaker wants to end three day waiting period for rifles and shotguns. Now, if you wanted to go to Florida, once again, I'm telling you, I'm going to do the big board until people actually get the fact that you have rights to keep and bear arms in your state constitutions in Florida. Got a Florida got a long one, man, all the way back in back in 1990. I ain't reading all that. You can take a look at it if you're watching live or in the replay. By the way, like, subscribe, share, hit me, hit me with all that stuff. Um, so the right of the people to keep and bear arms in defense of themselves and the lawful authority of the state shall not be infringed, except that the manner of bearing arms, concealed carry, open carry, may be regulated by law. Um, here we go. This is the one they're trying to get rid of right here. Um, there's, there shall be a mandatory period of three days, excluding weekends and legal holidays between the purchase and delivery at retail of any handgun. This is the one they're actually trying to get rid of, trying to abolish whatever you want to say there. So a South, this is by Skylar Swisher of the Orlando Sentinel. A Southwestern Florida state Senator wants to eliminate statewide three-day waiting periods to buy rifles or shotguns, undoing one of the major changes enacted after the Parkland mass shooting. State Senator Jonathan Martin's bill would keep the, the waiting period in place for handgun purchases while ending it for other firearms. Now, of course, I think any handgun or I'm sorry, any firearm waiting period is completely unconstitutional and it is only a gun grab. There is no data out there because you really can't have this kind of data that would say would prevent the amount of suicides or mass shootings or whatever the case may be. Now, remember the Parkland shooting, the FBI, local law enforcement, they all went to the shooter's house multiple times. They were there. They Right? What's the meme? He was on our radar. They knew he was there. Yet, it still wanted to happen. Just like in the Lewiston shooting in Maine. They knew the guy was there. They knew he was on, he, they, he was on their radar. Yet, the red flag laws and the yellow flag laws, none of that stuff was actually put into place. Um, so, Fort Myers' Republican proposal has alarmed gun control advocates who fear will make it easier for unstable people to quickly access weapons, including AR-15 rifles, used in some of the nation's deadliest mass shootings. Of course, this is cherry-picked data, right? This is cherry-picked data here because... Handguns are used more often than AR-15s in, you know, shootings and murders and, and stuff like that. Uh, but their focus is the AR-15 because it's scary and and so forth. And, and it's the easiest to convince your white suburban soccer moms that it is so, so, so deadly that it must be done or it must be done away with. Now, of course, the way they do this is they say, as Carlos Guillermo Smith says the last thing we need is to change a state law to allow people to make impulse purchases about AR-15s. He was a former Orlando Democrat state representative running for the Senate. This law has saved lives. Okay, my simple question, Carlos Smith, is prove it. Prove to me, through some kind of statistical analysis, how this law has saved lives. How many times it denied people? How many times somebody said, well, I'm going to go do this crime, but because there's a three-day waiting period, I'm not. I'd like you to show me that because I do have this from the Office of the Justice Programs Department of Justice back in 1993, why handgun waiting periods threaten public safety. I have that. I have that. And you can read this. There's a link to this in the description box down below. Just real quick. The analysis of the waiting periods proposed by gun control advocates prior to the retail purchase of a handgun, and you can, at this case, extrapolate it out to AR-15s, concludes that the real possibility exists that gun waiting periods threaten public safety by diverting law enforcement resources and disarming law-abiding citizens. We actually have that in the government records. Nothing there that now, now, of course, there will be tons of propaganda pieces from every town and wine mom demands actions and others talking about how waiting periods save lives. They'll bring the lady in from Colorado when we talked about their extension of the waiting period, how she was screaming about, oh, my son was going to do the suicide, but he couldn't get a firearm. And then he ended up in the hospital. He almost died in the hospital, but it wasn't from a gun. So she didn't really care. And then we'll use Colorado again when one of the other people was bragging that 
10% of suicides are used by guns, but they're 98% effective, which you and I, as logical human beings, will say, well, what about the other 90%? What about the other 90% of people who attempt suicides? Do we care about them or do we only care about guns? Because that's pretty much what you're telling me with that statistic. So once again, from the, the Justice Department, which you could say whatever you want, but this was 93 saying gun waiting periods threaten public safety. And you can download this for yourself. You can go to the link in the description box down below on YouTube and Rumble and on Spiritus, and you can find it and you can and you can read it for yourself. It doesn't do anything but threaten public safety. That is from the government's lips to your ears. Nothing that Carlos over here wants to. Back into the article. Martin did not respond to an email message from the Orlando Sentinel seeking comment. In an interview with Florida Voice, Martin said the intent of the bill is to eliminate long delays for law-abiding Floridians waiting to exercise their background checks to clear. Once again, you can't pre-crime your way out of these things. You've still had shootings. I believe the Pulse nightclub was in Florida. I believe there's still shootings that happen in Florida. So the idea that you're going to gun control your way to safety is just not, not true. It doesn't work. He said, quote, right now, there have been situations where people have been waiting months and months and months with no end in sight. Under the existing law, which I cited for you in the Florida State Constitution, the mandatory waiting period to buy a gun is either three days, excluding weekends or holidays, or the time it takes to complete the required criminal background check, whichever occurs later. Another bill, HB 17, filed by State Representative Joel Rudman of Navarre, or reverse that, quote, whichever occurs earlier, allowing buyers to get a gun as soon as the background check is completed. And 99% of good, um, of course, first of all, I think the Knicks background check is completely illegal uh, and is completely unconstitutional. It shouldn't take place. But secondly, the idea is as soon as the background check clears, which is usually 15 minutes, you should be able to get your firearm. It shouldn't say, well, we need to wait three days in case you cool down or case this other thing, this, that, and the other. If somebody really has a negative intent, and that's the idea here, right? They're going to find a way to push it. And there's no nothing you can say, and there's no data that can say, well, we had X, Y, Z amount of people, and they, they said they were going to go commit this horrific crime, but they had to wait, so they didn't do it. Under the existing law, Mandatory waiting period doesn't apply to the holders of concealed weapon permits. Supporters of quote-unquote cooling off periods say they reduce suicides and homicides by delaying access to firearms for buyers dealing with bouts of rage and despair. One 2017 study by a trio of Harvard University researchers found that waiting periods led to a 17% reduction in gun homicides. Okay, now you may say, Rick, they got you there. Did they? Because what are they always leading with? Suicides right? Suicides. Gun homicides are not in the same category as suicides. So maybe you can make an argument. I don't believe it. I'm saying I'm going with what the data tells me, what their, da their data tells me, that there's a 17% reduction in gun homicides. But are we seeing any reduction in suicides? Because that's what you're leading with. Now, of course, you have your 2017 study. I have a study from the Department of Justice in 1993. Which one do you think is more slanted towards a particular idea or ideology? That's right. Probably Harvard, which allowed David Hogg, David Boss Hogg with a 1200 on his SATs, which is like 400, you know, they usually led in 1400s and they let him in because of his political bias. Let's see if a 2017 study by left-leaning Harvard, and we all know the person who chairs Harvard, if you've seen her in the news in the, in the recent months, what political bent they have. So I don't believe a study from Harvard because I know who's writing the check for that. I'm more inclined to believe this Office of the Justice study back in 1993. It may have been a little bit slided one way or the other, but at least I feel it's going to be a little bit more clear cut than this one. Back into the article, National Rifle Association and other gun right groups dispute those findings and argue that the waiting periods, quote, only burden law-abiding gun owners without changing how or when criminals obtain them, unquote. 
Of course, domestic violence victims and other fearful for their safety shouldn't have to wait to get a firearm, said Luis Valdez, Florida State Director for Gun Owners of America. Once again, and this is the main this is the main argument that should be given every single time. A right delayed is indeed a right denied. We don't have waiting periods for any other constitutional right. These laws don't stop criminals. Criminals can use other tools to commit violent acts. That's it. Right there. It's perfect. It's perfect. Now, of course, they say the Parkland shooter legally purchased his weapon at the age of 18 from a gun store. Now, Will Skyler, and Skyler didn't do this because we know why, because it would it would affect her narrative. I'm assuming it's a her. That law enforcement visited the Parkland shooter multiple times. And he was on their radar. Yet they did not take any action against him. Interesting, isn't it? Interesting. Um, but I think this is an absolute must in the state of Florida. I think three-day waiting periods need to end. They need to go immediately because a right to later is a right denied. And I can tell you, and there is more evidence, or at least common sense would tell you, that waiting periods only impact those law-abiding citizens who are following the law and waiting to get a firearm than those who wish to commit violent acts. And those are the people that don't follow these laws. They never have, and they never will.